took a ride on the Everett Railroad. Interestingly enough, the Everett Railroad is not in Everett, close to Breezewood, but it's actually in Hollidaysburg, just south of Altoona. In advance of the trip, I was sure we were going to just have a diesel locomotive, but imagine my surprise and happiness when we saw this locomotive. This good-looking 262 Alco, made in 1923, was ready to roll, with steam just oozing out every place it should and some places it shouldn't. It'll have to wait because we still need to pick up our tickets and our pre-ordered lunch, which actually turned out to be really tasty. While some stayed at the station and took photos of the holiday decorations, I took our precious souvenirs to the car, then decided to walk around the parking lot and look for other locomotives before jumping on our locomotive. Off in the distance, I saw that double-header Norfolk Southern waiting to go. Making my way back to the engine, we still had time, so I took a quick look up in the cab, and then I thought, hey, maybe I'll just ask if I can come in, which they let me. Air pressure for the loco and train seemed okay with about 170 pounds of steam in the boiler. Looking over at the fireman's side with his hand on the water injector, no coal shoveling today, all oil. After he slapped my hand off the throttle, I asked the engineer if he was excited about today's adventure, and he says, I'm excited as I usually am. Thanking him for letting me up, I notice there's way too many people at the station, so I get rid of a few. As we make our way to our car, I take one more picture of this caboose. Who says steam engines aren't efficient? and others chased the train both up and back. It was very easy to do with lots of places to stop safely and video the train. Shortly after leaving the station, we crossed a little bridge. Sadly, no waterfowl to see. Then we traveled through a lot of forest and saw a lot of rail fans at grade crossings. is just part of the ginormous junkyard we passed, or as some would say, the graveyard of the rusted automobiles. Roaring past Roaring Springs, we continue south to make our way towards Martinsburg. Passing a few pretty big farms, looks to me like this farmer is harvesting alfalfa. However, it could be buckwheat or one of the other spanky in our gang guys. As Yankee great Yogi Berra would say, if you come to a fork, take it. About 45 minutes after we left the station, we're now at the Y. We see the locomotive backing up. Why, you ask? That's a good question. Wish I knew. Okay, I might know. Somehow or another, the steam engine's got to be turned around so he can see to go back to the station. As there is no turntable or runaround track, the Y is used. So the engine uncouples from the train and leaves it right there on the X. He then moves forward into the Y and backs up. Clear of that, he goes forward to the next part. He then backs up and couples up to the train. 
After a brake test, we move forward and head back to the station, 45 minutes away. So with that in mind, the turnaround video will make more sense to you. Uh, look like it from here, but he's actually going to back around that building so he can go forward. Now that he's headed in the correct direction, all he has to do is finish the Y back up and get us and move out. benefit of being the first car after the Y, we're now the last car. We're just burning up the tracks. Interesting tidbit, this combination car that doubles as a freight and passenger car was also the smoking car. Back before people knew smoking equaled cancer, they catered to smokers by providing ashtrays in the armrest and also a rough patch on the wall so if you had an unsafety match, you could strike it and light up. The ashtrays have been removed, but the rough patch remains. Well, we're back in the station on time. Must say it was a pretty good trip. I don't know why, but every time I see a turkey vulture, I feel the need to check for a pulse. Pulse check complete. Since it's real close, we're off to Horseshoe Curve, but that's another video.